Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis and today let's talk about the second item of the cytoskeleton, also known as microtubules. We have alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. If it ends in IN, it's usually a protein. And let's get started. As you know, your body needs a skeleton and your cells need a skeleton. Hashtag support. Most of your cells is water. The second most thing is protein, structural or functional protein. Structural proteins are immobile and they form the cytoskeleton. Here are the function of the cytoskeleton. I've discussed them before in previous videos, so just take a look at them. Cytoskeleton, a network of fibrillar proteins organized into tubules, microtubules or filaments, microfilaments, monomers into polymers. They determine the shape of the cell, etc., etc. And examples you have actin and tubulin. Actin was the microfilament, the topic of the previous video. Today's topic is tubulin in microtubules. Cytoskeleton is divided into microfilaments, microtubules, or intermediate filaments. Microtubules are made of tubulin, alpha or beta. They form cilia, flagella, as well as centrioles. What are microtubules? They are hollow cylinders with a lumen, no pun intended. Polymers of alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. If you have nine triplets of microtubules, you will end up with centriole. If you have nine duplets of microtubules plus two additional microtubules in the center, you have cilia or flagella. These triplets are star-shaped, these doublets are wheel-shaped. Each doublet connect to the other doublet using dynein, and a defect in dynein is involved in a disease called Cartagener's syndrome. Here is your microtubule, alpha tubulin, beta tubulin, and here is the lumen. Cilia is the plural. The singular is cilium, from Latin meaning eyelash, beautiful. They are found in eukaryotes, nine doublets plus two additional central microtubules, we call this nine plus two could be motile or immotile. Immotile, also known as primary cilia in every cell. One cilium per cell. Some of them are specialized in your sensory organs, such as your eye. They are the rods and in nodes, the dendritic knobs of the olfactory nerve, which is cranial nerve number one. On the other hand, motile or motile cilia. Some cells have multiple, not just one, such as the trachea, so let's draw it. So let's suppose that this is the trachea. The trachea has cilia in it like this. And these cilia act as a mucociliary escalator. What a brilliant name. Because let's suppose that there is like a part of foreign body coming here or mucus or whatever. They will try to extrude it. Okay. And make it exit your body like this. So it's acting like an escalator. Cilia are brilliant. Also, the fallopian tube has cilia. Okay, dear ovum, please get moving. They need enac sodium channels, which are epithelium sodium channels, to control the optimum fluid level inside of the cilia. Any problem with this will lead to a problem, as I will discuss later. When we first discovered immotile or primary cilia, we thought they, they were vestigial organelles. But starting from 1990, we found them in sensory organs such as the rods and your retina, as well as the olfactory knobs. So clearly, they are not vestigial organelles. Just a note. Now, for A plus students, pay close attention. If you have no motile cilia in fallopian tube, you have a problem can lead to ectopic pregnancy. Instead of having a baby in the uterus, you will have a baby or a zygote in the fallopian tube, which is not fun. Okay. This is not cool. So having a baby here is called ectopic pregnancy or tubal pregnancy. This could be fatal. A defect in primary cilium in renal tubules can lead to problems such as polycystic kidney disease or kidney stones, also known as nephrolithiasis. A defect in dynein arm can lead to Cartagener syndrome, also known as primary ciliary dyskinesia. CFTR mutation in cystic fibrosis has a problem with the epithelial sodium channel leading to increase the activity of this channel and this will lead to decreased secretion of fluid leading to a very thick mucus. That's why babies or kids with cystic fibrosis have really bad time with 
thick mucus. Let's turn our attention to flagella. By the way, structurally, cilia and flagella are identical. Okay, there may be some different um, aspects of their how many cilia or how many flagella and the way they move, but structurally they are the same. Flagella in Latin means like a whip, lash-like. Structure, th same thing, nine plus two, nine duplets plus two central single microtubules function is locomotion. Example, bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, they have flagella. Your sperm has a flagellum, if you're a guy, and it provides the sperm with propeller-like movement. Wow. It took me a lot of time to draw this. This is the structure of cilia or flagella. You have nine peripheral doublets, like here, and two central single microtubules. Very cool. Where is the dining arm? Dining arm is here. Cool. And where are the nexin? Or where is the nexin? It's here. Beta tubulin and alpha tubulin, they form doublets. And we have here, they are called radial spokes. Problem with dying arms lead to Cartagener's syndrome. Nine doublets plus two central single microtubules, you have cilia or flagella. But nine triplets of microtubules, you have centrioles. Two centrioles, they form one centrosome. So this pink structure is a centrosome. These two rods inside are the centrioles. Centrioles help in organizing the microtubules, forming the mitotic spindle. The mitotic spindles will attach to this chromatid using something called kinato cores. And this is the process of cell division. If you recall, I called you one of the functions of cytoskeleton is to help in cell division. Makes sense. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and don't forget to support this channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.